The search for America's best cake decorator is on. All right, here we go. Sheet cake. For the quarter sheet cake, I'm going to make a Arctic winter theme. The most difficult aspect of this challenge is that I'm not used to working that size. Quarter sheet cakes, they're very low. Our tiers are normally almost five inches high, so the fact that I have to work on a very low, you know, two inch quarter sheet is a little tricky because it's aesthetically, I'm not used to it. But I think I should have enough time to add all the, the details, the igloo, and some other winter accents to it. But we'll have to see because, again, I'm not used to working with that shape or size. <laughs> the quarter sheet cake, I'm actually going to attempt to make a three-dimensional couture pocketbook and do it in time, which is going to be tough. The techniques I'm going to be using for the pocketbook, I'm actually going to do a quilting technique. We're also going to be molding a chain and a pretty flower and putting it all together using clay guns and all different tools to make it happen in 45 minutes. The concept of the quarter sheet cake, I wanted to go a little bit out of the box. So basically my concept is to use each layer of the sheet cake to kind of like create a mattress, put them together, decorate the entire bed, and then put the kids element like the teddy bear, the pillow, and the back head. So it is a completely different design what you will normally expect from this kind of cake. For my quarter sheet cake, we're going to make something that looks like a flower box. So it has wood panels on the side, and then the whole entire top is going to be covered with sugar flowers. Hopefully, when we put it out on the table, it will just look like a box of flowers and almost not look like cake. When you're working with buttercream, it's super important to be able to have the time to be able to get it so that it's cold. The buttercream will firm up and then you don't have to worry about the cake going from side to side. So once it's cold, then you can continue to press against it and, and stack it. But if it's not cold, things just have a tendency to fall apart. No one would think you get a workout by rolling out fondant. The most challenging thing, since it's a pretty tall cake, I think would be getting the fondant on in one, in one piece. It's pretty important to try to get it on in one piece because otherwise it'll take much longer if I piece it together. And it's a pretty tall cake, so I think in this challenge that would be the hardest part. I don't know how the heck I measured wrong. Looks a little short, so I did not measure correctly. Isn't that fabulous? I basically cut my fondant a quarter of an inch uh, shy on each side. I have to cover it up somehow, and I think the best way is to cover it by using a border to kind of outline the, the pocketbook. Square cakes are harder to cover just because you have the corner element here. The igloo, definitely, this is taking longer than I thought, but I should be able to finish what I want to do in the next 15 minutes. I will use all the time for this one. As a decorator, you absolutely need to be able to complete tedious work or else you're in the wrong business. But the easiest way to complete all the challenges and everything that you have to do every cake, it's all about preparation. One of the biggest problems that people have when they're rolling fondant is that they start rolling fondant all over the place. And I think it's really important to roll the fondant keeping the shape of the cake that you're working with because you have to keep an eye on the amount of fondant that you're using because if you're rolling fondant out of shape and you're going to cover a square cake and the fondant is kind of like in a round shape, you're probably going to end up needing more fondant and it was your fault because you roll it out in the wrong shape. For me to get used to work with fondant and make sure it looks really good, it took me a couple of years. So you have to be exposed to different scenarios, situations, problems, issues. In making sugar flowers, I like to make them where they're white, they're made from white gum paste, and then dust on the petal dust. So it just gives it a lot more, a lot more interest, a lot more depth of color because we can mix and match the colors. It is like just a nice, pretty, pretty look. Nothing is ever one solid color. So when you look at flowers, when you look at them in nature, there's always multiple tones going on. Even if a flower is white, there are you know little shades. There might be a tiny bit of yellow. You can see a tiny bit of green that you can see. So we always like to blend the colors just so it's never 
one solid color and it just looks too flat in that case. I actually am proud that I have a chain mold that I came up with and also a flower mold. And I also have some extracts that I'm very happy about. I developed these products just because they weren't on the market and I saw a need for it and it just didn't exist. And it's all because I did a cake for my niece. It took too much time. And I said, I gotta think of a way to make it easier for you know everybody to do this. And I came up with this idea. See, right now I'm doing this by eye because of the time. Um, if I have five hours, I would probably measure everything, but I trust in my work. Another technique that I'm going to be using for this particular cake design will be quilting to create like the stitches on the blanket of the boy. So my idea is to run them um, all over the blanket to create like the actual stitches that you normally see on the blanket. I think sometimes when we're working on cakes we think that they, oh my gosh, they have to be absolutely perfect, but allow it to be a little bit um, more natural and I think it just looks beautiful. It takes a very careful eye to know how much is enough and when is it too much. So I'm just adding a nice finishing touch. It gives it a little bit more depth, makes it look a little bit more realistic, um, just so that it, it finishes that, that trompe l'oeil kind of look. And really, if you put this on a table, people are just going to think it's, it's a box of flowers. Time. I could always use more time. Every cake decorator could use more time in decorating cakes because there's always going to be something that you see from another angle or there's always something that you think you might add to enhance it. But if you prep out everything you need to do and give yourself enough time, there won't be any last minute stress. It took me a really long time to figure that out, but preparation is everything. And done. The quality cakes turn out amazing, actually, better than I was expecting. It is really important to be fast when you're decorating a cake because it depends on production. I mean, that means that you're going to be able to put together more cakes and not spend the whole day doing just one cake. Of course, there are some certain designs that are going to require the entire day, maybe more than one day, but speed is really important. I love my quarter sheet cake. I didn't have to worry about getting the sides of my cake so perfectly smooth because I knew I was covering them up with the wood grain pieces. It's just such a pretty cake. I don't know, I love, I love flowers. I love things that are natural and just right up my alley. I think the most difficult aspect of the quarter sheet cake challenge is that there's so much space that you can decorate on that you can either really go nuts and add too much so it looks too crazy or add not enough and make it look really bland and boring. So I'm trying to add something cool on there without making it look too, too crazy or too stark. I thought it was important to give it that wow factor and I basically took a little bit of confectioner glaze with a brush and brushed it right on the entire cake and it kind of gave like a leather appearance. I think that technique of the confectioner glaze just boosts it up a notch and just makes it special. Love it. I think it's gorgeous. I would want this cake. I wouldn't mind the bag either. <laughs>